what's your worst fear? Like the worst of the worst. What? That's so random. Why are you asking for this? Well, I just finished watching The Haunting of the Hill House on Netflix, and that bad neck lady really creeped me out. Well, this is kind of embarrassing. If I don't scare them one day, I'm gonna fart in class. What? That's so weird. Whatever, said so Let's go change to go anchor. Okay. Welcome, welcome, welcome Bulldogs. We hope everyone enjoyed this four day week. We'll be back to normal with a five day week next week. February is already almost over. This month flew by. Hopefully the weather improves. It looks like this Saturday it's going to reach 40 degrees. Anyway, on Tuesday, February 26th, during third period, sophomores and drivers ed will meet in the Sun Hall for a Think First assembly. They will learn about auto safety and how to make responsible choices behind the wheel. They could also play my classic video where I taught students how to parallel park. Once you're in a 45 angle degree, you will start to straighten up your steering wheel so you can get into the parking spot. Dang, Oscar, could I introduce you to one of my friends, The Curb? Hey, it's harder than it looks. The Sand Theater students will venture over to Victory Gardens Theater on Thursday, February 28th. They sure have a lot of fun field trips. And moving beyond next week, a couple of big events are coming up. Remember, th remember Think Week Bulldogs? When we all walk to Loyola's campus as a class. It's back. Think Week will run from March 4th to March 7th. I really enjoyed it last year. I wonder what they have planned for the seniors. And don't forget to tell your parents to buy tickets to Bruce for Bulldogs on March 8th. They are raising money for Friends of Sen, which helps provide resources for various programs around the school. And are we all Friends of Sen in our own way, Oscar? You stole that line from last week. Well, apparently we're all Friends of Sen except you, Oscar. Let's move on to the exciting week we just had here at Sen. SEN organized a lovely Black History Month assembly for the student body on Wednesday. SEN TV was supposed to have their video featured, but we had such great interviews that they couldn't do it. Let's take a look. Hello, my name is Ms. Jordan. Uh, for those who do not know me, and welcome to African American History 101. the Black History Month assembly. There were a lot of kids who wanted to perform and Mr. Walsh and I got together with them and they came up with the concept and the pieces. Uh, it was really about what they wanted to do and the, and what they've been working on that they wanted to show to the entire school. Man, you gotta see, we got some monologues, some scenes, we got poems, we got dance, we got people singing, y'all, it's lit. Okay. <laughs> to bury us and know that the sun is feeding his light in vitamin C. When you think the rain is drowning us, know that the water of the sky above is quenching our thirst. So when we come up in the world, understand that we have had our bellies filled with rays of light that burnt our ancestors' skin as they worked in fields and our thirst quenched with the aged water and our own tears for centuries. We will rise and live in silence. A heart with no beat, a singer with no song to sing. Harriet Tubman. I'm gonna say this, and I could be speaking to one person or I could be speaking to all. Okay? At the end of the day, throughout all of their choices, throughout all of their childhood memories, they had some form of adversity. 
is the first Black History Month assembly I think we've had here in the last 12 years. So it was really good to see that and to see the wonderful stuff that our students can do. Sam has become huge in the worlds of girls wrestling. Some of the Sand TV juniors, Kirsten Sheraldi, Natalie Chayaret, Marco Sandoval, and Naima Woods produced this great video highlighting their season. Enjoy. My name is Andre Lacus, and I am an English teacher and head wrestling coach at Sun. Wrestling like a girl means wrestling without inhibitions, wrestling without worrying what anybody sitting on the sidelines is thinking or saying, mm -hmm. wrestling without caring that people think that you are out of place in that world. Coach Angela Cruz, an English teacher, has been coaching the Sand wrestling team for over seven years now. She describes the importance of a community in her team. Um, we are family. So we are family? Yeah, we are family. We are a family. Mm -hmm. Everything that happens to one of us affects all of us. Right. You know, a lot of people were like, oh, why do you want to deal with... Girls are so emotional. No, the girls aren't emotional. The boys are the emotional really? ones. <laughs> It's not, that's not to say that it's a bad thing. You know, wrestling is an emotional sport. You are, it's a team, but when you're on the mat, it's you and the other person. And you are not only wrestling against the other person, you're wrestling against your insecurities and all of the things inside of you that you're trying to overcome. Mm -hmm. And when you win a match, you know, after that sometimes it's, it's emotional, it hits you. When you lose a match, when you've put 110% on the mat, and you feel like you're leaving a part of you on the mat, that's emotional too. Whoa, huh? uh, a family, because I think we all are connected with each other. Whenever we have problems, we share it together, and then we try to solve it together. And I think like everybody's so friendly, and then we try to motivate each other whenever we are wrestling or in a tournament. Well, I joined wrestling in my freshman year, and that really gave me a community because freshman year I was very shy and timid, and many of the wrestlers on the wrestling team were very nice and friendly, and they did talk to me outside of wrestling. <laughs> always be equal to boys, and then if boys can wrestle, then girls can obviously wrestle. Because I heard at many competitions that many guys go like, oh, send, you know, send wrestlers a girl, it just should be easy. And I feel like that can be very discouraging to many people. However, once you do beat them, it is a very... <laughs> increase in confidence that we see in our female wrestlers um, even over a span of you know two weeks there's a difference in how you carry yourself how you respond to situations how you then like the difference between people when they're on the mat and off the mat and there's just such a big boost in self-confidence and self-awareness first year wrestlers Bernice and Mio that for their best friend activity have chosen to join the wrestling team together Yes, if you are a girl and you are thinking about coming out and wrestling, join your team. Wrestle, get involved. Mr. Bore has organized the food drive again this year with his math classes. So of course, Kay was there. Let's take a look. Can you tell me about this food drive? Absolutely. Uh, our food drive is the Shiditarod, and it is a citywide food drive uh, benefiting the Greater Chicago Food Depository. How long has it been going? It's been going on since 2004, I believe, and we have been doing it the last six years. Could you also tell me about your previous awards? Yes, so the last three years we've been competing at SEND to raise the most food in each classroom. And as you can see behind me, uh, my classes have already started raising food, and my second period class is in the lead. And over the next eight days, we hope to raise as much as possible. And uh, yeah, um, and the class that wins gets an award. But um, two years ago, we got third most food raised in the city, and last year we got second most raised in the city, so this year we're going to first place.
The August Wilson monologues are in full swing. Sand Theater has had great success in this competition in the past. Let's see how they are faring so far this year. Uh, my name is Mr. Ewing. I'm the lead theater teacher here at Sen Arts. We are on the stage of the Ramus Theater for the closing of the August Wilson Festival. The seniors closed out the performance tonight. Ever since I was a little girl, I don't care what nobody else do. That's what gives me so mad with urban white folks trying to be put out with you all the time. This is what I tell you. No. The white man cannot help me. I it was phenomenal. These seniors have been working on these monologues and scenes from these plays for four years, and tonight was just a really great culminating event of them like strutting their stuff and straight flexing on everything they've God done. God take a nigger's prayers and throw them in the garbage. God don't pay niggers for mine. In fact, God hates niggers. Hate them with all the fury in his heart. Jesus don't love you, nigga. Jesus hate no black ass. <laughs> Shit to me. <laughs> Talking about burning in hell. Huh. God can kiss my ass. And, um, they're such a tight knit group. They're so immensely talented. Um, and they just shared monologues from all ten plays of the century cycle. Now they got some nice looking women in the city. I'm like, a real good. <laughs> It was great, we had a packed house, the energy was great, a lot of proud families and teachers, a lot of students from uh, the theater department, from Sen Arts, from all of Sen. Um, so it was just a really, really great night and the seniors did a great job. August Wilson speaks for me, about me, and through me. Next up, we have Monique Anderson ranking her top five Netflix original movies. Let's turn it over to her. Monique? On this episode, I'm going to be giving you my top five Netflix original series. Coming in at number one will have to be Lucifer. This show wasn't originally a Netflix show, but after it was discontinued, Netflix took over for the for the next season. There's a total of three seasons, and it's highly addictive. Number two will have to be Seven Seconds. This show focuses on the justice system and everything that's wrong with it. Tied with second place will have to be Dear White People. The name of the show is kind of self-explanatory. If you're a sensitive person to subjects like these, then neither of these shows will suit you. My number three is Stranger Things. Now this show been out for a minute, and if you're not watching it already, then what you doing? It got romance, action, drama, and it keeps you on the edge of your seat. Number four, The Haunting of Hill House. When I tell you I was unprepared for how scary this show was, it was that serious. Saving the almost best for last, number five, Black Mirror. If you like movies or shows about the future, this would be perfect. Or if you're ever wondering what the world would be like in 10 to 20 years, this is your show. Now, all of these shows are really good, which is why I'm recommending it. So don't sleep on my list. Eden Boyd is back with a weekend review. Plenty going on in the news, right Eden? Take it away. A lot has been happening this week, and in the U.S., Donald Trump declared a national emergency because of the border wall. He held a press conference about the national emergency, and it was kind of weird. I have a national emergency, and we will then be sued, and they will sue us in the Ninth Circuit, uh, even though it shouldn't be there, and we will possibly get a bad ruling, and then we'll get another bad ruling, and then we'll end up in the Supreme Court, and hopefully we'll get a fair shake, and we'll win in the Supreme Court, just like the ban. Let's just be clear, this is not a national emergency. Trump is just being bullied by his supporters to build the wall. This whole thing is just so ridiculous because most drugs come through legal ports of entry and most undocumented immigrants come by planes and just simply overstay their visas. This wall won't stop anything and it's just a symbol for hate. Anyways, Bernie Sanders has announced he's running for president in 2020. I was kind of surprised that he was throwing his hat in the ring, but he squelched all doubts about his abilities in a recent interview. So, Senator Sanders, you're going to run for president. I am going to run for president. That's correct. What's going to be different this time? We're going to win. Uh, we are going to also launch what I think is unprecedented 
uh, in modern American history, and that is a grassroots movement, John, which will have at least one million people from every state in this country uh, coming together to not only defeat Donald Trump, not only to win the Democratic nomination, uh, but also to lay the groundwork for transforming the economic and political life of this country. That's what's different. Empire actor Jesse Smollett is under fire for possibly orchestrating the attack against him in January. If he really did lie about the whole thing, it's extremely disappointing. Lying about these types of things makes people doubt those who actually experience hate crimes. If he actually did do this, he needs to own up to it and admit his mistakes. RBG returns to the Supreme Court after a series of health issues. She has always been an advocate for human rights, and so I'm glad she's back on the job. Fox News might not be so happy, though, because when she was dealing with some health issues, they broadcasted an image that made it appear as though Ruth Bader Ginsburg had died. Unfortunately, the iconic fashion designer and creative force behind Chanel, Carl Lagerfeld, died on Tuesday at the age of 85. This is a true tragedy as he contributed so much to the fashion world. We wish his family and friends well during this time. Something good did happen recently, though. Luke Bryan, a famous country singer, adopted an 18-year-old dog who was left at the pound. The dog was abandoned by his previous family that suddenly developed allergies. That is so infuriating, but at least he found a happy forever home in the end. That's all I have for this week. Thanks for watching. And last but not least, we have Patrick Williams for Sun Sports. What have you got for us today, Patrick? Gypsy woman told my mother. Hello there, son. My name is Patrick Williams, your sports and political analyst. Baseball tryouts officially began on February 25th. The team looks come back strong this year after a rebuild last year. This team, the team boasts the largest junior class it has had in the last three years. A sign of good things to come. Boys basketball. The boys basketball team had a great senior night against Intrinsic High School on Tuesday, February 15th, with Noah Chapman leading all scores with 30 points and 9 rebounds. Also for his career, he has 2,000 points. And senior guard Tyler Browning had a career night with 14 points. We beat Intrinsic 74 to 40. All right, let's take a look at Noah Chapman's 2,000 point ball ceremony. The boys and girls track teams competed in their first indoor meet on Saturday at De La Salle. All team members approved upon their times clock then in practice. We had some excellent showings. Despite being one of the smallest and youngest teams in attendance, Jono placed second in the boys' 60-meter dash and third in the boys' 300-meter dash. Joey Piper hauled it for a close finish in the boys' 400-meter, placing fourth with a time of 59.72 seconds. We look forward to competing again at CBS, CBCA on February 27th. We are just getting started. And now on to wrestling. The dual season is completed and Bulldogs varsity ends the season nine and six. Notable victories include Lane Tech, Fenwick, and Schurz. On February 2nd, the boys varsity team participated in the IHSA Regional and half of our roster advanced to the sectional. Sun Wrestling placed third in the regional overall, placing higher than Amundsen, Ridgewood, Roosevelt, Sullivan, Matter, and Lakeview. Frosh Soft State kicks off on February 2nd, 24th at Niles West High School, and Girls State kicks off on March 3rd at Evanston Township High School. Our boys volleyball trials our March 4th in the main gym. I hope to see you there. That's all for your STEM Sports News of the Week. Stay tuned this weekend to learn, about, to learn more about what's going on in professional sports. I hope you guys try out the Edgewater Tacos from last episode. Today I have another restaurant called SB Kebab located in Edgewater. 
is a short video of what they serve. Hi, we're here at SP Kebab, one of the top 10 restaurants in Edgewater. We're here with the owner, Pitt, so can you tell us about the restaurant? What would you like to know? Like, when did you guys open? Uh, like, what do you guys serve? Uh, we opened up eight years ago. Uh, we're serving European style kebabs, which are totally different compared to the Mediterranean style. Uh, so, inspiration, of course, is coming from there. But we modified the product more for towards European communities. So from the meat to the spices to the sauces, everything is changed and a little bit different compared to the Mediterranean styles. We, our menu is nothing like super big. It's, those are just like different versions of serving the same product. So I believe everything is good on the menu, right? Because I'm the owner, <laughs> so we always saying that. But I can tell you which are the most, like, most sellers, the biggest sellers, which are basically our homemade wraps, which we're baking in-house, uh, um, which is like basically homemade wrap, meat on top of it, um, vegetables on top of it, our sauces, french fries as well, which is kind of new probably to US communities in terms of like french fries inside the sandwiches. But uh, we're doing it and it's becoming more and more popular. So, yeah. Was that you? Did you fart, man? Seriously? You're disgusting. <laughs> Why are you so gassy, man? Yeah, this stinks. Come on. That was weird. So that's all the time we have for today. You have to say it, right, Oscar? Not my circus, not my monkeys. Alright, I'll do it. Toots my goose. So weird. Whatever, Sandy, let's go. All the way here, you I hope you guys try out. Oh my god. I hope you guys try out. You are way. like so distracting. <laughs> Baby. Pay attention. <laughs> just you're not even looking here. No, up. you're supposed <laughs> to look here. If something is. Sorry, me don't be seen. Go ahead and talk. <laughs> Alright, this one after this one. 5, go. I hope you guys try out the edge water tacos from last Hold time. Hold on, she said 5, 3, 4, 2, 1. <laughs> <laughs> she said 5, 5, 3, 4, 2, 1. <laughs> That's what Are she you, said. Hey, Are you not, do your I job. said go, no, I said do your job, didn't I? I said, Almost done. I hope you guys try. <laughs> That was like take six or seven. <laughs> it's because she says it wrong. It's three, two, one. Yeah, she said three, two, just, one. Ready, go now. I wish now. you just go. That's what she says. Five, four, three, two, one, go.